Welcome to Homeland Heroes Salute Podcast with your hosts, Doug Macedo and Jim Roberg. Welcome, welcome everybody to another episode of Homeland Heroes Salute Podcast. I am your host, Doug, and we've got Jim Roberg here as well. He is another host uh, here, and uh, we're actually uh, going to be talking... Um, and getting some things going, just trying to adjust my mic a little bit. Um, so, you know, I know, um, as everybody knows, this month is um, Women's History Month, um, which I know we did already. Um, for uh, last week, we chose, um, I, I did it uh, for uh, giving the hats off out to uh, Julie um, Weymouth with Homeland Heroes. Um, you know, do you have anybody uh, that you can think of that uh, you want to give your um, your hat off to for uh, Women's History Month this month? Well, I'll second, I'll second you with Julie, right? What an incredible person in general. She but also, she is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to my wife and my mom. Oh, absolutely. Gotta, can't, can't, can't forget those people. The woman who who gave me life and the woman who makes my life worth living. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. You know, um, I got to say, you know, also, um, you know, let alone, you know, my grandmother and all that, my wife, you know, I got to give it to, um, you know, also be author, come on, of Golden yeah. Girls, you know, yeah. Yeah. come on. You know, and, and there was, uh, where I was talking about the military, right? So it, it reminds me that I had, this really incredible drill sergeant who was a hard ass drill sergeant Fairchild. And I don't even know her first name. Never, never figured out her first name was just, but she, she really helped me become the person that I am today. So shout out to her too. Oh, absolutely. I know we, we all have, we always have that one. And, uh, mine I had was uh, drill sergeant Russian. Um, and if you're if you're listening out out right now, uh, drill sergeant Russian, I, I, I my hats off to you as well, because you know just like as uh, Jim said, it's uh, you know you you made me who I am today as you know a fine soldier and uh, that body by Russian, yeah, <laughs> that de- yeah, def- she, definitely did me some good. Time. She definitely smoked me so hard all the time, just. Every time, it didn't even matter. I was just in the front of the arrest position constantly. Oh, I, 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 I totally agree with all that. That's <laughs> absolutely. I think uh, I forgot who that who the who the other private was, but um, we uh, she had uh, another soldier uh, put a um, the sandbags on my back 
Um, and I mean, they laid one right across my shoulder blades, laid another one right behind that, and then I had another one behind that, and I had to keep doing push-ups um, in the sand pit um, right across from, um, it was the sand pits right across from uh, Foxtrot 313 at Fort Jackson. Um, it was absolutely um, a nightmare, but it also was a great experience. Um, you know, and what really is kind of crazy is like, I have my basic, uh, basic training photo here that oh, was, that was little, a little baby Dougie. I know. Look at that, man. I, uh, that little baby face too, man. Come on. Um, I, st I still, we're, we're old and ugly now. <laughs> Cam the camera doesn't put on 10 pounds. It puts on about 200 pounds, you know? So really, I mean, this is <laughs> shit. I'm I'm a sumo wrestler now. I don't even know. <laughs> you know, it's um, it's absolutely amazing, um, yeah. but definitely got to give it a shout out to the, uh, uh, you know, for the women this month because it is Women's History Month. Um, you know, definitely, um, our hats off to them and. Everything that they keep doing uh, in their lives, keep doing it, um, you know. And, like, on that note, right, like, shout out to the to the women who are breaking down the barriers in the military and, like, becoming special forces and rangers. Oh, and like, absolutely. It's incredible. Like, anything a woman can do, a man can do, and I don't know why it's taken us so long to realize this. No, I, like, I, I get know, it. I get it. That's, like, crazy. They, good on them for for continuing to fight even when they shouldn't have to yeah i mean it was there was uh um uh, what was the um um i'm trying to remember the uh first uh female soldier um i believe she was an officer um mm -hmm. that went uh through uh ranger school went through rip and all yeah. that um you know i can't even remember her i I remember remember it. Um, it's in the back of my head. Uh, Queen Elizabeth and Queen Elizabeth was, served in the in the mil, in the in the English English military back in World War Two, right? Yeah. And so this was just a trivia question. My wife and I play trivia sometimes, right? And so it was like, what was her job? And there was all these things. I thought for sure she was a nurse, right? No, no, she was a mechanic. She was a mechanic. A mechanic. She was a mechanic. Wow, Queen that, Elizabeth. That is that. That's crazy. That's um, right? something I didn't even know. Um, yeah. You know, did you? I mean, do you do you do you know that um, women make up sixteen percent of the U.S. military? 16, I didn't know that. Yeah, sixteen percent, um, and it's it's crazy that you know. It's sixteen percent. You know, it should be much, definitely much higher. Um, but I know there's a lot of them. Like you know, um, a lot of things happening through the military, which um, you know, really, it's crazy things. Things work out, um, and it's great that they're tearing down the barriers uh, yeah. of saying, "Hey, listen, I can be held to the same standard as as a as a male, and still complete." you know, these training and it's like, it's like good for you. Stand up for and what I, you believe in. And not only do that, but probably be more detail oriented about it and, and maybe even do a better job. Oh, absolutely. Make, make, make us, uh, you know, look, look like fools. Absolutely. I mean, please, um, you know, it's, it's absolutely, it's, it's great to see, that uh, women are doing that, and they're br they're breaking down the barriers because, you know, we don't live in the 1600s anymore. It's, you know, come up and, you know, <laughs> if you can do the job, do the job. Um, yeah. You know, and, you know, it's just like anything even in the work history and uh, being in the civilian life. You know, a woman shouldn't have to sit there and, you know, be told they can't do something even though they have the backing to it and they're able to do it and they get 
they get passed up on just because they are female. They should that 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 shit shouldn't happen. Uh, point blank, you know. Again, we're not back in the days where you know women are not equal. Women are equal, and they should be treated equally. Um, for the for the individuals that don't treat them equally, shame on you. Absolutely, shame on you. Um, those those barriers need to be taken down you know it's just like uh being parents you know is a father less of a parent to his kids than a mother is no absolutely not are there cases where you know guys are not um are not guys are not um the best parent for the kids there's there's cases absolutely um you know but there's cases where you know Guys are the better parent than the than the mother. Um, you know, there's no difference. It's it's both both sex are equal and should be treated equally. Um, just like you know, it comes to anything else, uh, race, religious, and all that religion. It uh, we all just need to be treated equally and not be treated differently because you know we're not back in those days. We're not. Uh, we're not trying we're we shouldn't be having those conversations um but unfortunately people are still making those judgment calls and saying and using that against people and they shouldn't be um you know in this world in this this in this world um um, but uh but yeah i'm still trying to remember um who that woman um was in the uh, U.S. Army Ranger School. Let's see, because I remember it was early, mid to early 2000s. Uh, yeah. Well, and like, so I'm the, I, I have two daughters, right? So like, yeah, I'm even more of a proponent because I don't want anybody telling my daughters they can't do something. You know what I mean? Like, Oh, absolutely. They, Hands down. They can, they can totally do it. My, my two year old, I'm pretty sure she could be the next world's strongest person. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I even think my, um, what my daughter who is, um, what is she? 12. Um, she, she could be the, you know, she has an IQ that's friggin' out of this world. Yeah. She's very intelligent and she's also she she can she can definitely pick up some weight. She she can she's pretty damn heavy like heavy by like she's picking up weight that is, you know, more than what she weighs and all this stuff and it's like you go girl, go. Yeah, yeah don't, do it. Don't let nobody don't let anybody ever tell you no. You can't do something. When someone That's... says that, when someone says that, you say, you know, forget you. I'm gonna do it. And yeah, you're put gonna... your head down and grind. Yeah, I mean, just go for it. Um, it's crazy. Um, but that per- that first the first female um, looks like it was. Uh, I I believe it's it's Shay um, have have her H A V E R. Um, she was one of the two first women along with, um, Captain Kristen, um, to graduate the U.S. Army, uh, school, which took place on the 21st of August of 2015. Oh, the um, Rangers? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Uh, they were ranked th- 34th, um, on the Fortune magazine of 2016, um, there was another one that was a um, another female who was uh, farmer. Twenty two um, on April seventh became the, uh, the first woman to graduate um, as a non commissioned officer um, and got the Ranger tab. Um, you know, which again, this is you know, it's. It's absolutely amazing, you know, that these, um, you know, that these women are breaking these barriers, you know, and um, right here, it's the uh, 
four women have passed the uh, grueling course to become a Green Beret, um, and several are serving in those jobs. Seven females are serving in the uh, Ranger Regiment, which totals about 3,000 soldiers. And that was just posted as of August, uh, August of uh, last year. Nice. Um, you know, so, you know, I even remember um, that movie when that came out, the movie uh, G.I. Jane um, mm -hmm. for the Navy SEAL. Um, yeah. But they're saying, which I'm still, I'm, I'm kind of flabbergasted, but um, it, it's probably, a, it could be true, but I, I'm, Again, I, I'm not 100%. I'm doing more digging. Um, but they're saying right now there's no no past or present females. Um, Navy SEALs. Um, which I'm... I thought there was. And that's why they did the... Um, the movie G.I. Jane. But I could be wrong. So if anybody out there is watching this and you do know... If that's true or not, please just put the link. Just put uh, your put the answer down below, and um, if you got a link, share it. Because um, I would definitely like to be um, one hundred percent certain before I say it's not true or true. Um, not to switch topics on you, Doug. No, shoot. I, I have I have I have a real question for you. Go ahead. Because you posted something the other day, and yep. it made me think. Were you a cheese or a peanut butter in your MRE kind of guy? Am I a cheese or peanut butter? In your MRE. I am a cheese. Oh. But oh, I do like man. the peanut butter. But the peanut the butter was But the that. cheese, the jalapeno cheese is the one I like. Yeah. Cheese no, I'm, I'm peanut butter all day. <sighs> peanut butter all day. You know, peanut butter goes a lot with with a, goes a lot with a lot like goes a lot with everything. Um, yeah. Cheese definitely doesn't. Um, you know. Yeah, you, you were you were taking that jalapeno cheese and putting it in your chili mac, weren't you? I was. <laughs> yeah. I same thing I was doing with the um, with the bread. I was always yeah. I was always breaking that up, putting that in with the uh, chili. Well, you had to. You had to because you couldn't just eat it. it no, was like it was a so bread. Gross. I mean, come on. <laughs> even the beef patty, I, I, I had to like, I had to break all that up and cook it. Oh yeah. Because cool. again, all the slime that was on the beef patty. <laughs> you know, it it it, it made it, it made the uh, the bread a little soft. The best part of not being in the military anymore. Not having to eat MREs. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you that um, it is it is a good good part of it, but I'll say I do miss um, occasionally having an MRE. Um, like that, I, like the guy I was talking about earlier, um, Hoppy Camper. He he brought an MRE with him uh, um, to a uh, stealth uh, camping event. Um, yeah. If you've missed the episode. Go back and look for it. Um, it's called Hoppy Camper. And it's when I interviewed a uh, gentleman who does stealth camping. And he pulls uh, one episode, he pulled uh, an MRE out of his bag. And I'm like, dude, that brings a lot of memories back. You know, you always yeah. looked, usually it was by number, you'd always be looking for the yes. MREs that you yeah, look. Yeah, you look on the side of the box. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like, okay, I know my MREs in there. And you, wa I bet you'd wash it down with a rip it. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> um, and I, I, I kid you not, it was. I always enjoyed. Um, which one was it? Oh, the fajitas. Oh no. Um, and what was the other one? Um, oh, the uh, vegetarian. The. Uh, um, the vegetarian uh, omelet one, but nope. it always they always had the good candy too too. Yeah, I get it. You know, you know what? I like the, the kosher meals that we had in down down range. Yeah, I could I could get down on like a can of spaghettios. Oh, dude! The, I, t I tell you, some of the um, some of the hot days that we used to have 
um, while we were oh, FTXing, yeah. it was like, oh, they're, dude, this is like delicious. And I remember taking pancakes, sausage, the eggs, just dumping the syrup right on top of it and eating it like a sandwich. And Bro, then... so like, so when I was down <laughs> rain, nine months of my deployment, I got hot days for breakfast and dinner every day because we were at an outpost. So we'd have to like drive over to the base, pick up our food drive yep. back lunch was like you got an mre sometimes yep. they'd give us like bread and lunch meat and it really made me appreciate mayonnaise because i could not get mayonnaise over there i could only get miracle whip and yep. miracle whip in my opinion is that, not very good that's why i don't like mayonnaise mustard ketchup i'm i'm all set with that i don't eat it um oh, yeah. you can say i'm un-american <laughs> Because what are you what are you supposed to put on a hot dog if you don't have you know ketchup or mustard? Well, ketchup you... doesn't belong on a hot dog, dog. Oh come on! You know how many people tell me it's absolutely incorrect? It's like that's what's supposed to go on a hot dog is ketchup and relish. You know, no, no onions, mustard, relish, yeah. and brown spicy mustard. No, 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 can't do it. Oh yeah, I do. I did my French fries and some ketchup and some some mayonnaise. Mm. Oh, uh, my my kid, my my kids do that. I'm yeah. like, what? what are you doing? I mean, that list. It's you know, it's so delicious. You just they, pour some mayonnaise on. They even do it with their sometimes with chips. Okay, I don't do that. Well, what do you think French fries are? I I get it. I can't do it though. And that's but and that's ketchup, what my ketchup and potato chips. That's actually pretty good. I just, I just can't. I just, no. I just put a slice of cheese if I can. All right. Well, I like some cheese too. Or if I get, if I get my hands on chili, I'll put, I'll put chili on it. Chili's bro- like beanless chili is all right on a dog. No, 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 no. I need, I need you to be able to. Yeah, I need to be able to go. You know, now have you put, and clear have you put my system. On your hot dog. What is it? Baked beans. Oh, absolutely. Hands Cold down. Stuff. No, can't eat it. What? Can't eat it. What? Potato salad, macaroni salad. Can't Love eat it. it. No. Nope. Love it. Oh, yeah. So good. Because no. it's the mayonnaise, right? Yep. Can't eat, yep. Dev- can't eat the devil dogs, um, those uh, devil dog uh, eggs. Can't eat oh, those. Oh, the devil eggs? Oh, yeah. yeah those are... No, can't can't do it. Oh, oh man. Oh, yeah. It's it's sad. It's a sad, I'm uh, sorry sad for day. You. I'm sorry for you, but I will I will I will mourn the can loss you, of your buds. <laughs> can you can you can you eat them for me? Because I can't. I will 100 <laughs> percent all day every day. Um, you know, um, I know. Um, before we continue, there's um, you know, some events that are coming up um, with Homeland yeah. Heroes uh, uh, Foundation. So I want to make sure that we uh, get that information out there. Um, as everybody will see, um, we I do have it playing before the episode, but I just want to make sure everybody gets it. Uh, we have the Great Gatsby. That's going to be uh, Saturday, April 27th, 5 to 11. Um, if you don't have your tickets already, you can. that's fine. You can reach out to Julie, either by through Homeland Heroes Foundation or her phone. Um, then you also have the uh, annual uh, Homeland Heroes uh, 10th annual uh, motorcycle ride. That is for the Ryan's ride. Um, that is going to be on June 22nd, 2024. Um, so please make sure you guys definitely get your guys' tickets for these. Uh, registration's at 9.30, uh, between, from 9.30 to 10.30, and at 11, uh, 11 a.m. on the dot is, um, is kickstands are up. Um, that's going to be over in, uh, the Dairy Salem, um, Elks. So be on the lookout for that. And then final right now uh is what we've got um is the homeland heroes annual golf classic last year was absolutely amazing a lot of giveaways a lot of prizes um you know per- it was a great lunch too uh so make sure you get you guys tickets for those that's for 7 a.m is the registration as well as the driving range will open and at 8 uh 8 a.m uh, it's going to be a shotgun style uh start scramble so make sure you get your tickets. Uh, you can reach out to Julie on those. 
Um, you know, the cost of that is 150 per person. It's usually a, uh, what they call a uh, foursome. It's uh, four people that are on a team per team. Usually everybody gets together and they already do. They already know who the teams are. Um, but if you are a one individual or two individuals that uh, need uh, another player or two, um, don't worry about that. Just reach out to Julie um, and let them know so that uh, they can definitely team you guys up with, with that. And that is actually on a Monday. So Monday, August 5th. So if you got to use a vacation day or if you got to use a sick day, definitely use it. Uh, just don't tell your boss if you're using a sick day to go golfing. Um, unless they're going with you too. Um, you know, that's always the good thing. Um, but with, you know, with everything that we're, what we're talking about, um, you know, again, with, you know, the women, uh, women's history month, you know, and it's great that, you know, again, these women are breaking the barriers, um, and getting, getting, being recognized for it, which is, you know, it's absolutely, you know, great for them to be doing this. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, sad that people still think, you know, the opposite and they shouldn't, you know, women don't, are not fit for combat. Women are not, you know, should not be, you know, in an infantry unit. <laughs> you know what? They they took the same oath. They're signing on the same dotted line as anybody else. Give I them think they're... They, they probably got expert on the shooting range and they didn't. Yeah. Uh, never know. I know. I know I didn't get at, listen, I didn't get, uh, I didn't get expert on the shooting range. Not got, my last time through. Sometimes I did. Sometimes I didn't. No, no, I screwed up. I couldn't, I couldn't make the 300. I, I think I unaccidentally made the 300 once hit a 300, <laughs> but I definitely yep. know I missed, uh, one of the fifties. Oh yeah, that happens. Um, but shame, shame, <laughs> shame for those targets because those paper targets were never. I was never. Oh, good dude, at I didn't them. have those. I had those pop up green ones. Yeah, the sil the silhouettes that popped up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they weren't paper. Yeah, they well, I, I I got paper and the green silhouette plastic ones popping up. Listen, you're so fancy. I, I had them. I had them all. You know. Yeah. I, I hit the three hundred meter a couple of times, but let me tell you, it was a lot of work on my breathing. Yeah, it it really is. It's the control. It's the control breathing, um, making sure that um, you're not just pulling into the trigger. Um, yeah, you're just we don't pull. Yeah, it's um, it's all that, and then you know, control breathing. You know, because yeah. you you really just got to have that down, and then let alone that, you got to have your sights, uh, you know, dialed in. If your sights are not dialed in because you were Kentucky windaging it to get through, you're not going to hit the 300. Well, and that's know? the thing. And and this was like a great life lesson for me, right? Like it when you were zeroing your weapon on the before you went to the range, right? Yeah. Like the work that you put in there determined how how you how successful you could be when you got on the range, right? So like it's all oh, about absolutely. that putting in the work at the at the beginning and then you can be successful when you hit the range oh absolutely absolutely and um i um i remember every time we always had to go to the range um even when i had to work the range detail um uh, i'll tell please. you it was it, it was crazy but it, um you know i uh i i understood why they did the no um no uh, no brass um, made sure that everybody had no brass in their pockets. Um, totally got that. Um, totally understood it. Um, but I'll tell you, I took some brass. The used brass. Okay? And I still have have some. Yeah. You know? I you didn't. I, I, I may even have one round not used. Uh, maybe, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I could. It's a potential. I don't know. I, I, I got to say, I, I don't know for sure. But I do know I have used brass. Yeah. You know. But, yeah. hey, I, 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 wanted to, I wanted to make a shrine. 
I made a little shrine like a shadow box shrine, you know? Yeah. Who, I hear you. You know, maybe, maybe. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if I have that anymore either. Yeah. You got to check the garage. Yeah, maybe. I got to check, check everywhere. The basement. Yeah. If, 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 if it's not there, I got to, uh, I have to call all, all, I got to call my exes and find out they, they took it. <laughs> um, which I, 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 that's a scary situation. Yeah. Might just be worth chalk up as a loss. Yeah, I think uh, I think that that's an absolutely best way to describe it. Just chop it up as a loss, and because that, that's a loaded that's a loaded question with a loaded gun. Yeah. You know, At uh, least the library. I, I, I know I I probably won't walk I probably won't be able to walk away from it. I'll be the one getting put right six feet under. <laughs> Um, but, um, you know, with everything going on, um, you know, I definitely want to say again to you, uh, to you women, um, you hats off to you guys and, um, I applaud you, um, you know, keep doing what you guys are doing. You guys, uh, you, you ladies will, uh, definitely, um, achieve it, um, and with that, um, I mean, do you have any uh, anything else you want to um, speak on, or forever hold your peace? I think I'm gonna forever hold my peace. And I think I will too. So until next time, everybody, we will uh, probably. I, I'm working on getting a guest for uh, with us, um, and so we'll uh, be working on that. And if anybody knows anybody that wants to. Come on and share their stories with us and talk to us and um, see where it goes. Let's uh, get them on here. Send us an email. Send us uh, a message through Facebook. Uh, you can send an email to us through our Facebook. You can even send us um, send a mes- message through Homeland Heroes Foundation's um, website. Um, or even just reach out to Julie and let her know. And she will uh, get you guys in contact with us and... We'll be uh, definitely glad to have you on and uh, talk about your experience and, uh, you know, carry on from there. Until next time, we'll, uh, we salute you and uh, have, have a good one. All right, you guys. Thank you for supporting Homeland Heroes Salute Podcast. Please make sure to like and follow Homeland Heroes on all of their social media outlets. Homeland Hero Salute Podcast is a Blue Bar Studios Sinister One co-production.